Welcome back to Face to Face. I'm John Ralston. We're joined today by Sue Loudon, the former KLAS anchor woman, former state senator, former Republican Party chairman. She's still a gaming executive, I think, and now she's running for the U.S. Senate. All right, let's talk about health care. Uh, one quote from you I saw about the public option is you said it's a frightening thought. That, that was your, you know, a majority of Americans support a public option. Why is it so frightening to you? Well, I don't know what statistics you're looking at as far as the majority of Americans wanting a public well, option. Most polls show a majority of uh, I, Americans. I, you'll have to show me that poll. I don't know that poll. What's frightening to me is that you look at other countries like Canada. And, and one of the things that I've done when I've been on this tour of, of, um, of Nevada is talk to people who either lived in Canada or were Canadians, and, and they know the horror stories of what's going on in Canada. People waiting for surgeries for weeks, even years. Uh, people wanting to see a doctor. No one's saying we should have a Canadian health care. This is a scare tactic no, that Republicans so? are using. I, no, I don't well, think well, it's a scare tactic. Well, why don't you, use, why don't you say realistic. socialized medicine would, next? Would you calm down? No, why, why, do you, why do you say socialized medicine next? This is not what's going on. The public option is this much of what's being proposed, and Republicans no, are making let me tell it you what's this happen. much. No, let me tell you what's going to happen if there's a public option. You have companies out there who are spending a tremendous amount of, of dollars on, on health care costs. And I'm all for reform. I'm the first one in line for reform. I think we need to get those costs down. As a businesswoman, I know how expensive it is to have health care coverage. So let's talk about the reform that's needed. But if you have a public option and you penalize companies for not you know, having health care, for instance, what's going to happen is everybody who has health care is going to go, we'll, we'll take the, the penalty. It's a lot less than we're paying now. So you say that the, the public option is going to be this big. It's going to be this big. And everybody's going to be in it. It's broken. Let's fix the things that need to be fixed. And, Let's and talk you were about asked about things. that. And you were asked about that by, uh, by Gary Waddell. Remember him? Uh, he's been I around KLAS a long time. Let me show you the few suggestions you have okay. for Congress to fix okay. health care. How do we make sure that when a doctor opens their door, January 1st, before they see their first patient, that they're not paying two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars in medical malpractice insurance just to see a patient. How do we fix that? Let's have that kind of a dialogue. Let's talk about buying insurance across state lines so that, like we do with auto insurance and like we do with uh, our health insurance, uh, let, let's make it cheaper to purchase insurance. All right, so you got the RNC talking points down. You must be still getting those memos, even though you're not chairwoman anymore. That's what all the Republicans say. That's all you regurgitated there. But what about the real concern in this country about 40, 50 million uninsured folks? You just want to forget about them? No, I want to make it affordable for them. You know, I'm very sympathetic. You make the cost cheaper is how you make it. You allow everyone with pre-existing conditions to be allowed. Let's talk about things we do agree on. Pre-existing conditions, everybody should be allowed to have health insurance. And let's make it affordable so that people who uh, can't afford it right now can afford it. Let's, let's cut down on mandates, which, which encourage the you know, insurance companies to ask for bigger prices. Let's have smaller policies that are affordable for our dealers, for instance, or our valet parkers who are right out of well, school. Well, let me stop you right there, because you mentioned mandates. Uh, you know, there's another thing that Republicans have been pretty uh, uh, strong on, both here in Nevada and nationally. Let's cut out all these mandates. So you want to just make it so insurance companies don't have to cover anything if that they don't want to cover? No, no. I want a menu. I want to be able to say, if I'm right out of school and I say I'm a dealer or I'm a valet parker and I'm invincible because I'm 24 or 25 years old and I don't even need insurance because it's so expensive. I don't need it and I don't I'm not going to take it. So people shouldn't be forced to have insurance? No, no. I'm saying that let's make it affordable so that they make it part and parcel of what they do with their paychecks every week. So let's it should be mandatory it, or not? I'm not sure what your position is. I, I, well, I'm not sure if you're listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying that you have to have affordable, you don't have to have that, but that's what you need to have is affordable insurance so that you can have a menu. If you're a single guy, do you need mammography? For instance, you need that covered. So that should be on the menu of things. Gary Reid says you're against uh, covering. I know he grants. says that. I and that was a mandate that. issue too, wasn't was it? In the mandate, state senate. Yes. Thank you for knowing that because uh, it's not like you can't have it. You can have it. It's a it's a menu of but things you think that it should you be need mandated. to have. No, I, I think that it, it should be something that you select. If that's what you need, if you're a woman, if you're a, a family, and, and and you have females in your family, yes, that should be an option for you to select. But if you're a single guy and you'll never need a mammogram, why is that in your insurance policy? That's the kind of stuff that makes insurance policies 
unaffordable when you have those uh, regulated mandates that force the, the coverage to go up. I'm so the, should to, the government never mandate what insurance companies have to cover or, or, or and just let the private sector decide that? Or is there sometimes... If you have enough of the private sector out there who are looking at all the different needs that people have, why would the government get involved? Because the private sector will figure it out that you need this, this, and that. Right. Let people decide what they want. Why should government get involved with that? All right. I have. Speaking of menus, I have a menu of questions for the last segment for Sue Loudon, who's now a candidate for the U.S. U.S. Senate back in a moment.